Hello, I'm Leona Dooley and this is Ebony, Ivy, and Time in the Kitchen. And tonight in the kitchen, we're going to prepare some uh, rotten potatoes that are going to have just a little bit of a twist. So, if you're interested in what I'm going to do, please stay tuned. Now, my hubby loves potatoes and I love cheese, he loves cheese. And so we decided that with our rotten potatoes, that kind of takes the best of both worlds. And so uh, that's why we're fixing our rotten potatoes tonight. Now, I have sliced the potatoes thinly, and I'm going to prepare these in my cast iron skillet. And uh, I'm gonna turn you down so you can see how I'm going to put it together. And I'll talk about the sauce, and I'm gonna give you the recipe down in the box below. So don't think I'm leaving you out. I'm not. So stay right there. All right, I have my cast iron skillet right here. And like I said, I have oiled it to make sure that it's ready. And uh, in this skillet first, I've put together a sauce. And all it is is just a very easy bechamel sauce. I didn't even heat up the stove. I did all of this in the microwave with two cups of milk, enough cheese until it tasted as cheesy as I wanted. I added in about two heaping tablespoons of flour just to give it the right consistency and a half stick of butter. So in the bottom of my skillet, I'm gonna start with a layer of cheese. Why not? And you'll see that most, well, most of the cheese is melted. Some of the cheese is still a little chunky and that's okay with me because like I said, we love cheese. So I'm going to just kind of spread that around and I'm going to start to add in my potatoes. Now, like I said, my potatoes have been sliced thinly and I'm going to put them around in a nice layer on top of these, once I get them in the first layer, I'm going to add in a sprinkle of onion because onion just adds a good flavor to your potatoes. So I am laying these out. You know, it depends on the size of your potatoes. It determines the size of your slice that you're putting in. So all of that's been covered and let's get in just a little sprinkle of those onions. Now I have way more onions here than I really need but I got happy when I was slicing them so that's why you see a few extra. Don't think you have to do. This was just one onion and uh, so I'm just sprinkling in a little bit of onion. On top of the onion I'm going to add in another layer of the cheese sauce and just kind of give that a little spread and then we're ready to start adding in more potatoes so let's get those around 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 this is the best dish ever and you always want your consistency to be just right. You know, I've added in the salt, the pepper, um, so that it would have good seasoning. I wasn't heavy, heavy on the salt, but let me tell you, always taste your salt. Taste your, your sauce, not salt, but taste your sauce to make sure that it is the level of saltiness and pepperiness that you want because that's gonna be determined by your family. Okay, so we've got the cheese in. I'm gonna give a little sprinkle of those onions. Again, just a little, just enough. All right, now we're gonna add in another layer of cheese sauce. I'm probably not gonna need all of this cheese sauce. Okay. And of course, 
but I'm going to put one more, another layer. I'm going to try to use all of these potatoes. So however many layers it takes to use up these potatoes, that's what I'm going to do. But just for your information, you may decide, see, these are pretty thin. I don't know if you can tell, but they are very thin. I used a mandolin to slice them. Now, do you have to? No. If you're good at slicing, um, I can certainly slice, but when it gets that thin, um, it, that's not usually my forte. So, I uh, usually use my mandolin for that. Okay, sprinkle in just a little bit of, of our onion, just a little. Okay, give it just a little more cheesy. Not a lot of cheese, because we want to save just a little bit. Okay, and let's see if we can finish up this last layer. And you know, I've been kind of careful with how I put them in. And when you get to the last layer, that's really the layer you want to be the prettiest, because that's the one that everyone's going to see. So I, you really could have just kind of thrown the potatoes in there that first, the first couple of layers because no one would have noticed. But I tried to be careful with each one along the way so you would see the logic in what I was doing. So let's see if we can put those in. Get these covered. And I'm going to let the potatoes be the last layer. So this top layer is going to run a little thicker than the others, and that's okay. Now, just so you know, um, I'm going to let this cook in a 350 oven. I'm not in a big hurry, and uh, I'm going to, um, when it's gotten just about there where it's bubbly, just starting to bubble. I'm going to add a sprinkle of cheese, maybe, on top of that. Now see, that ends the potatoes. And you know, it may be that once I put this in, I may not need any more cheese. So we're just going to look at where this gets us, how far it takes us. And if we have enough, I won't have to add anything to this. It is going to be just right. So I am going to just kind of get all that. And if you're not a big cheese person, of course, you can kind of cut back on the cheese. But I am. I want my potatoes to be quite cheesy. I love this consistency. And uh, making sure I get a little cheese on everybody so everybody's happy. Okay. Now. What's going to happen is that because it's cooking in this cast iron skillet, mm, it's going to be delicious. Now this is what I'm talking about. It's beautiful. So let's get it out of the oven. Yeah, needless to say, there will be no eating of this for the next... 15 minutes because it is hot, it is bubbling, and it is absolutely beautiful. Let me take this out, put that there. Let's see if I can get it over here so you can see it because my goodness gracious. Woo! Woo! This is beautiful. See if I can get you in closer. Now this is what your au gratin potatoes in a cast iron skillet should look like. Notice it is golden on top. It is, see if I can get you in close enough to see those bubbles. It is still bubbling. I cooked this at 350 for about 45 minutes. 
Now, I could have put it at a higher temperature, but the only problem with it being at a higher temperature is that it's going to brown a little too fast. I could have covered it, and you could certainly do that, and then put it on 400 or even 375 to be a little safer. But what you don't want it to do, you don't want it to stick, and you certainly don't want it to burn. So this is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to get in this potato au gratin. Wow, I can't wait to get in here. It's going to be delicious. Okay, I'm going to have some uh, roasted asparagus. I have put my uh, top oven on 425. And I'm going to let that come to temperature and uh, let that temperature increase. But in the meantime, I have this pan uh, getting hot and I'm gonna put in just a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to get my asparagus ready. Now to prepare the asparagus, you know they always come with, uh, with the little rubber bands around them. I'm gonna cut those. I had two, and I'm going to pull this water off just a little bit. It's pretty hot. And I'm just going to give them a really, really, really good rinse. Now I'm going to sit them off on the side. In fact, I'm going to sit them right here in this pan that I'm going to use in a little while. But I want to season the asparagus and I also want to make sure that I don't have any little woodsy uh, ends. So the best way to do that is to come down to the end and give it a break. And that tells you the fresher part of your, it will break on its own as to where that little woodsy piece is. Most of these are in pretty good shape. They aren't really that woodsy. And uh, but sometimes you have rough ends, but I could really feel that one. But most of these are pretty fresh, and that's good. Okay, let's uh, get these broken. I like being able to do it that way. I, you could just take a knife once you have an idea as to how much needs to come off of your stems. You can just take a knife and give it a little chop. So, let me show you what you would do. Since we know that we lost about, mm, about two inches, we're gonna take two inches off the ends. And we'll do that. Now I'll do that with the rest, just to say for the sake of time. Line them up, take the two inches off, We've just about gotten everybody happy, and voila, that's the last one. So I'm going to bring that pan back so you can see it, and uh, I'll bring you down a little closer so you have a good view. Now, with this pan, what we are going to do, we're going to take some of the oil. Now, I know we put a little bit of oil in the pan, but I'm going to drizzle just a little bit of that oil over the asparagus. I'm gonna get some pepperoncino because I want it to have lots of good flavor. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little pepperoncino over it. Now I'm not gonna cook in this pan. So that's the reason why I can do this. And you'll see that in just a moment, I'm shaking in some salt, some pink Himalayan salt. And I'm going to shake in some pepper. The top of my pepper was a little loose. 
Okay, so we've got some pepperoncino, we've got a little um, salt, we've got a little bit of red peppers, and I'm gonna sprinkle a little house seasoning over that, just a pinch. Now, I'm gonna take, just with my hands, I'm going to let these get, rub them in the oil and in the seasoning. All right, now remember we had that pan over on the stove. And what I'm gonna do with these is that I'm going to put them into that hot pan. So let me wash my hands real quick to get some of that oil off. And I'm gonna be ready to start the cooking process. So, stay tuned. Now, our pan is screaming hot at this point, and that's exactly what I want. And you'll see that I'm gonna swirl the little bit of oil that I put in there. I just put about a quarter size dollop of oil into the bottom, just enough to give it a surface. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take these asparagus and you'll hear them hit that surface. Now I'm going to use this pan in just a minute. So our asparagus is hot. Now, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these and I'm going to sit them in my oven under that nice hot heat that we turned on. We had it come into temperature. And uh, let me make sure I did what I was supposed to do. Okay, there we go. And this is hot so that I can continue with dinner. Now, I'm gonna fix the big guy some salmon. And, uh, but that's not a part of your video, but we are gonna fix some salmon. So I'm gonna actually prepare it in the pan that we used to season up the asparagus. And that way, I don't have to have, really don't have to add any additional seasonings to the pan. Okay, so I'm gonna take my three little pieces of salmon. There's one. There's two. And there's three. Now put them skin side down and they've been sprinkled with Obey and uh, of course the seasonings that were already in the pan. So I am going to give them a few minutes. Shouldn't take over about five minutes. Not even that. I'm going to check on my asparagus. They're cooking very nicely. And under the under my uh, broiler, actually, and we're going to be ready to eat in a very very few minutes. Now, one thing to keep in mind: do not bother it, because when it's ready, remember we put it skin side down. Notice this will come up very nicely without any problem. So I'm gonna flip that first one over. This, this one's not quite ready. Well, it is a little. There we go. I'm gonna flip it over. Now let's see if this one's ready. Yes, it is. How about that? So we are going to give it a flip. Okay, my asparagus are done. I just have them sitting in the oven for a minute. And I tell you what, all of this dinner is coming together and it's going to be done like that. All right, guys, I added in one pat of butter and I'm just kind of letting that simmer for just a moment because everything's ready. I'm going to take a piece of lemon and that lemon is just going to bring out the, the flavor. And I'm just going to take my lemon and just put it over my fish. 
And then my other piece of lemon is going to go over the the asparagus. Uh, 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 uh. They are beautiful. They are absolutely beautiful. Now, I've got my my potatoes, my au gratin potatoes. I'm going to take some of those asparagus and put them in there as well. And actually, since it's the two of us, there we go. I'm going to move this and get Honey's uh, get Honey's fish because it is ready also. There's one. And actually, he needs his protein, so I'm going to let him have two little pieces. They're not real thick, so if those are his. And this plate is ready. I'm going to get mine. And I'm going to put my asparagus on my plate along with my fish. There we go. Dinner is ready. Everything's turned off. This is going in the hot soap and water. So that, that can soak. We have a couple more pieces of, uh, of asparagus, as you can see. And we have plenty of potatoes and gratin to be able to eat. So we'll get you there. This wants to move. And bring you around so I can see you. Hey, we've had a fantastic time in the kitchen today. And I hope your dinner is delicious tonight. But we're having salmon, asparagus, and potatoes are gratin. I hope yours tastes as well as ours. Remember, we work hard in this kitchen. We love God and our family. And we know that everything else is just gravy. So, blessings to you and yours this evening. And I'll see you soon right here in the kitchen.